Hello, Steven here, and welcome back to our Best Buy Data Flow. And we're going to continue working on our products uh, API flow. If you haven't had a chance and you're new to the channel or coming back again to watch some more videos, take some time to hit that subscribe button so you can stay informed when new videos come out. And I uh, keep up to date on them. So what we need to do is last week we're working on the API and we were modifying the URL for the request. So we're going to go ahead and continue finishing this now. All right, so base URL products, we went ahead and got rid of the question mark at the end because now we need to change it. Oops, wrong ones. Okay, those are open and close. Now it's category path dot ID. Uh, then it's equals, and then this is where we're going to use the category ID attribute that we have on our full file. And that's in there. And then now we're going to add that question mark that we took off from the URL in order to put the categories in here. The format is good. API key is good. And then we have page size. So I'm going to move. Let's see. This will work now because we are we do have that attribute. We need to modify, though, the show. And because we're going to show some different information for this API. So let me copy that from my clipboard here. And we'll substitute that out. All right. So what are we doing different for what we're going to show? Well. First thing is we have our uh, show SKU, name, model number, a new fashion, regular price, the sales price is if it is on sale, online availability, in-store availability, customer review count and customer review average. All right, so that looks good to me. I'm also going to save myself some editing later and just add that to the end way easier to deal with. Okay. So that should work. I can't, I don't think we're missing anything from it. Uh, see everything else is still good. We're not changing anything here. I think we're fine. So we can go ahead and test this out. We'll change it to one every 10 seconds. Don't want to put all those in there and fell on all of them. Zoom out a little bit and we're going to bring this up here. Let's get this cleaned up. We're not going to need this anymore. Okay, just a little cleaning up. Keep it all on the screen so we can see more at once. All right, so we're ready to test out and see if it works. Uh, go ahead and start that. Stop it. And that did not work. <laughs> Let's find out why. Okay, so we have a drop here. Check out the attributes and look for... <clears throat> All right, so what's it telling us that's wrong here? Uh, oh, API key. Oh, I may not have added it back the right way. Okay, so let me go ahead and fix that real quick.
All right, welcome back. I got that fixed now, so the URL is correct. We'll just take a quick peek at that. Uh, yep, got it all fixed, got the uh, API part in there correctly, and everything should be fine now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and send one through of our three. One goes through. Check out the response back. All right, so we can see we have products. And then straight from there, we have all the details that we were asking for in the show part of the URL request. And we can see in this case, this one is for the category path for processors and CPUs. Uh, so we're getting back Core i3, Core i9, all these different SKUs for them. Uh, online availability, in-store availability, so false for both, both this one, so they don't have it in stock. Uh, true, true. There we go. This looks pretty nice. This is exactly what we're looking for. And this will be much easier for us to work with as we go down because there's no sub, there's no nested arrays that keep going down that we're requesting information on. So we can easily just break it down by products and start splitting this and then getting it into wherever we're sending it. All right. So we're good there. Uh, so let's make sure the rest of this is working and that it feeds into our loop. Okay. Now I'm going to. Reset all this real quick. Because I want all the, all five categories to get processed. We can set this now to one every second. <clears throat> and three of them. And here comes the last one, five. Okay, so all those made it through. Now, according to our work that we did before in our loop, this is going to evaluate the page counts. <clears throat> so the current page we're on and then total pages. Now the cool thing about the way we set this up last time is each one of these flow files is separate, right? They each have their own total counts on them. They each have their own current page number on them. So we just wrote all that to the attributes. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Look at this first one here. And we can see that we have Category ID, the current page is one, and total page is two for this one. So this one's gonna have to go through one more time because the total page does not equal the current page, and it's gonna get processed again. If we take a look at this next one, current page is still one, the bottom is total page is one. So this one won't go through again. So we should be, the cool thing about the way we do this loop is it's dynamic, right? The attributes are what controls whether or not they go through based off the routing uh, expression that we put in here. So it doesn't matter that they're all from different categories because every time they loop back through here, the fact that we're dynamically swapping out the, or we're building the URL dynamically with the category ID information from the attribute itself, that means each flow file is individually tracking uh, its category ID, its current page and total pages. So they can actually, we can mix a whole bunch of different stuff in here and they'll just work. So we don't have to worry about that. Now from here though, in order to finish the loop and get it working, let's go ahead and just make sure it's working. So we'll put a placeholder in here with a weight. we we'll just send all that there cause that's what we want to do, right? That's how it needs to work. And then we can go ahead and turn these on and see what we get for our final results. <clears throat> All right, so there's running, we already have six. We only had two of the five that were routed through here the first time. So only two of them had more than one page for the result sets that we're getting back. And remember we're doing uh, one page is, uh, can have 100 different results on it. And it looks like we're done. So we're gonna have a total of nine different flow files that need to be processed with their varying amounts of products. We can see different sizes in here, some pretty much smaller ones. I mean, we have some pretty good size, big ones. So like 30 kilobytes here. You can take a look at that one. And here we go, this is video cards. So we have video video cards in here, AMD video cards in here old, new, whatever's in stock, whatever they carry currently for Best Buy. So those are all in here. Now we can go ahead and start working with that.
All right, so next steps. Well, we need to keep pushing them down. Next thing we want to do is split the JSON apart, take it down to the products level only so that we just have products now per profile. And then we can start deciding how we want to place these someplace. So let's go ahead and move on now. We'll turn this off so we can work with it. Empty our queues. There we go. Get rid of that, get rid of the weight. Okay, so the first thing we know we want to do is split. And split the JSON. We want both of these, right? Because that's how our loop is designed. Take this over here. And then what we want to do this on is products. <clears throat> So our JSON, uh, I think it's just products, if I remember correctly. Uh, relationships need to be taken care of. So let's go back and look at how we handle this in the category section. All right, so they come out of the invoke, come out of there, the loops, there we go. Split on categories. We're gonna split on products. Yep, so it's just the name. Uh, and then, okay. This, so we're not gonna do the same thing we did before for this one. So uh, in this case, I think the, I think the results we're gonna get, we can actually just convert straight into, this is gonna be a much shorter flow. <clears throat> we can convert these straight into uh, SQL statements if that's what we wanna do. So split, and I think we can say, this on to SQL. We'll take this split out there, terminate the other relationships. Cause I don't expect to ever have problems once we get it working. <coughs> a split on products, oops. And that looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. I don't think we're gonna have an error. Could be wrong. There you go, 100, 300. <clears throat> Still got more coming in. Looks like that's the end. All right, so we can go ahead and check this out now and look at the individual results. There we go, JSON for individual products. So this is actually perfect. This is what we need. <clears throat> so uh, we're coming up close to the end of our video. So now let's just think about what we want to do next. We need to take this data and we need to place it somewhere so that my, my goal is to be able to run this processor, say every five minutes, every 30 minutes or whatever. And the reason being is for products that don't have stock, I want to be able to track those inventories on those products that are in high demand. In this case, we have a couple categories that we're looking at where we know we have products that are in high demand uh, and that they're out of stock a lot. So I'd like to be able to see that. And when we have some items that are not, but we do see some interesting stuff like this one, right? Where we can see this TV is not available online, but it is available in the store for purchase <clears throat> or for pickup. So it'll be kind of nice information to have. And this could be helpful for Say you're trying to put together a site or something or just track availability on products and set out notifications when something's available. Well, I mean, this is basically all your backend stuff to make that happen. Uh, so what we want to do is if we're going to put this into a table, we need to create the table schema, go ahead and set up all the columns in there <clears throat> and then start writing back to it. Now, the problem with doing it in a table, say MySQL or SQL table for Microsoft SQL is we can't, <clears throat> we can't do an upsert. Uh, so the way, the way we would have to handle those inside of those two platforms would be we have to write the data every time to a temp table and then probably use a merge, uh, a merge function to merge that into the existing data with the changes. That's one way to do it. Uh, I don't think this is the best place, though, to store that type of data for what we're doing here. So we'll look at two other options. Um, we've used uh, Elasticsearch before. Now, Granted, Elasticsearch is best at doing full text type data storage and queuing, uh, querying for that. But you can use it to do some other data as well. So this will work in there. Or 
uh, we can actually use something like Couchbase as well, which is great for applications. Uh, it's NoSQL, it's schemaless, and it works in JSON. So we can just send our stuff right over there. We can set up our ID, say, on our SKU, and then we can just keep updating that. And I think that's one we might try because we haven't used Couchbase yet as a storage solution. So we'll go ahead and look at that next, and we'll do that in the next video. So until then, I'll catch you next time. Don't forget, you can find the templates for each video for the progress that was made at the GitHub site. <clears throat> and then you can also, uh, if you haven't already, and feel free to hit that subscribe button and get notified every time uh, new videos come out. I'll catch you next time. Bye.